and fix this molecule with terminal for us, add the carbon has been the same. We say carbon one and carbon through three because we fold it will be the same. So in our two carbon in the three carbon atom unit, we have two possibilities. In a one carbon atom unit, there's only one possibility. In a two carbon atom unit, there's only one possibility. That's the reason why methyl, there's only one name for methyl. There's only one name for ethyl. But when you get to propyl, because there's two possibilities, you have two different names, n-propyl and isopropyl. Now we have a three carbon atom unit. I mean, four carbon atom unit. We have carbons one, two, three, four. If I were to do four carbon atoms, so what I just name it one, two, three, four, is there any symmetry in this molecule? I'm trying to figure out how many different carbon atoms do I have in that molecule? How many different carbon atoms do we have? One way to figure out how many different carbon atoms I have is to try to put a line of symmetry through the molecule. Can I take a line and, ask, and fold it and make any of my carbon atoms identical? Yes. If I put a line between carbons two and three, and I want to fold it, I will make carbon one equal to carbon four, and I will make carbon two equal to carbon three. Instead of having four different carbon atoms, I have two different. Now my two different, when I, add, when I uh, attach that little four carbon to three chain, there's two possible I can actually, there's two carbon atoms I can attach to. I can attach to carbon one or carbon two. There's two carbon ones and two carbon twos. If I take my attachment and I attach to carbon number one, hold this off a second. And I'm attached to carbon number one. First of all, how many carbon atoms do I have in my branch? How many carbon atoms make up this branch? Not the lowest carbon chain, how many carbon atoms make the branch? What number are you looking at? You just got randomly number stuff on I'm like, what number are you looking at? You're like, ah, four. this right here, my little circle here represents the longest carbon chain. So this right here is going to be the branch that the longest carbon chain. On this branch, there are Four carbon atoms, right? You didn't see it. We got down to a whole bunch of them. I said four first. These are changed to five. Because you made me feel like I was wrong. Don't change it up to five. Make you feel wrong. But you got a number four. Then what name goes to four? Butyl. So this video will still be butyl. All four carbon atoms will still be butyl. But since we made at least a carbon one and carbon two, they have a different rate for butyl. But there's more than one type of butyl. And this butyl, I am attached to the carbon at the where? At the end. What name do they be given to this butyl? This is N butyl. Equally, I could have been attached to carbon number two in my butyl chain. Again, the moniker still be called butyl because it has four carbon atoms. But since they, so you can see it for the attachment carbon with one and the attachment carbon with two, with two different type of attachments, we have to have a different name. To answer this, you got to go back to elementary school. What did elementary school had to do as far as naming this molecule? To figure out the name of the molecule, we're going to find out. We're going to find the longest carbon chain. Find the carbon in our butyl group that the uh, longest carbon chain is attached to. How many carbons are directly attached to this carbon atom? Not talking about the longest carbon chain. How many carbons are directly attached to this? We put a star. How many carbons are directly attached to the star carbon atom? Two. two. What grade are you in when you're in grade two? Second. Second. This refers to a secondary butyl or set butyl. Secondary view. Or 
four, set beauty. Four, even lazier, S beauty. Because secondary, too many words to write out at one time. Sec is a little bit smaller, but even three letters at a time could be too many, too many letters to write. So we just use the letter S to represent secondary. Now remember before we did, as far as like the uh, net, uh, drawing a different structure, the same formula? We did an arrangement of four and zero. What are the arrangements we come up with? Three and one. And three is what we number our car maps. Got one, two, three, four. In the molecule, we have four carbon atoms. We're going to do the exact same process we did when we had four in a straight line. The next thing to look for is symmetry. Is there any symmetry in those four carbon atoms? Yes. 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 Draw a line through here, and you can see that one and three are the same. We got a one, two, one, four. Yeah, not as easy to see, but four is also the same as one. Hey, brothers, what you talking about? One is a CH1. How many carbons on carbon number one? How many hydrogen on carbon number one? Three. I am a C3 attached to a CH1. I am looking at carbon number two, CH. If I look at carbon number one, I am a C3 attached to a CH. What is carbon number four? Three attached to a CH. Same group, same attachment, are the same atoms. So it turns out that atom number four and atom number one are the same. Now, what's this for dividing that? It looks kind of odd about how you say one and four are the same. If you were to draw it again and then try to rotate a little bit, you that can see the carbon number four and carbon one are the same. So, in this arrangement of four, three, and one, you have two different types of carbon atoms. I could be attached to carbon number one, which is on the outside, or I could be attached to carbon number two, which is in the middle. If I'm attached to carbon number one, I'm attached to carbon number one. What name is given to me when I'm attached to carbon number one? First of all, I have a total of how many carbon atoms anyway? Four. So I know I'm going to be a butyl group. What type of butyl am I? Not going to be seen in, the problem being the same as being in butyl is that if you look at N butyl, which is right here, and I look at this other butyl group, are these two groups the same? Are these two groups the same? Yes. Mm, but as far as looking at it, are they the same? This group, which is N butyl, the same with that people. The right here. The is right here. The second view. Now, again, the first question comes up why not call it in butyl also because I'm attached to carbon at the end? That actually will make good sense as far as doing that. The problem is doing now is that we call this in butyl because again it is attached to carbon at the end, which is the same we did it earlier. Um, if I call this in butyl also, then I have two different butyl groups that I have the same name on. 
You cannot have two different strokes with the exact same name. So they had to come with a different name for the next group, which is test carbon one. Other one referred to as isobutyl. So why is it iso again? Iso means what? Same. Same. If I were to draw a line through this carbon atom all the way through, I will make this carbon atom and that carbon atom the same. So if you had five uh, carbons right here where the end butyl was, that would be iso as well? Five right here on the same line where N butyl is. Mm -hmm. Instead of the four, if it was five, would that be iso? It'll be so far as this right here. Mm -hmm. That's what you refer to. Mm -hmm. How many carbon atoms in that chain? Five. Five. Five is not butyl. Five would be pentyl. Mm -hmm. So you so can't iso call it pentyl. That would be N pentyl. Because this would be in a straight line. Okay. So the O is down in the middle. Oh, this is not an O. This is the longest carbon chain. Right. The little circle for longest carbon chain. Okay. It's not an O. Longest carbon chain. Okay. So if the longest carbon chain was right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. On number three, it would be iso pentyl. Then it would be pentyl. Getting like this. Actually, eight different names for the pentyl groups. Okay. Yeah. And again, it's why some really, really all we're doing is just one and two. Okay. I mean, you have three and four. Actually, four. Let me go take this off for you because we're not actually doing five carbon atoms. That's four. Now, one question, like far as, like again, you can't actually do it with five, six, even bigger number of carbon atom groups. It turns out when you do eight carb, do five carbon atoms, you got eight different names. And again, also because summertime and also regular year, we can't get bogged down at every little single little uh, branch molecule and stuff we're dealing with. We only go up to as far as like a three carbon atom, four carbon atom branch, not a five or six carbon atom branch. Even though it's possible to get more than those number of branches. So here I'm going to test to, in this chain here, I'm going to test to carbon number one. Next, I'm going to do my test, I'm going to test to carbon number two. And this is four carbon atoms attached to my longest carbon chain. I'll write it again. Longest carbon chain. This molecule here is the four carbon atom is still considered to be butyl. This is still a butyl. Now we gotta come up with a name for this particular butyl group. It's not in butyl. It's not isobutyl, because not the same attachment. It is not set butyl. This again goes back to elementary school. Yes. So in order to know that it's attached to the first carbon is when it's being divided and you can make the same. No, for example, I got four carbon straight line. There's, there's, are we trying to do how many possibilities it can be? At? If I had a, um, four groups, four carbon atoms. If I have four in a straight line. It tells me I have two places I can attach my, I can have the lowest carbon chain attached to. I can either be attached to carbon one or carbon two. It do all four in a straight line. It's still four carbon out of the unit, but we got four carbon in a straight line. I have two total possibilities I can be attached to. I can either be attached to carbon one or I can be attached to carbon two. Okay, for a bit of the last one is the Mm -hmm. That's attached to carbon one. That's attached to carbon one. Now I get carbon one. Remember, we did our one, two, three, four carbon atoms. Mm -hmm. We get like a three to one type rate. Right? We did a three, one, three, and then one branch. We then did a symmetry to figure out how many carbon atoms we're dealing with. Total number of carbon atoms we're dealing with is going to be two. All the ones on the outside will be identical. So you got one, one, and one. 
in my three carbon atom chain, I'm trying to figure out if I, if I attach it to carbon number one, what name to give it to my beautiful group. If I'm attached to carbon number two, there's only two possibilities, either carbon one or carbon two. If I'm attached to carbon number two, what beautiful name can I put? And then if you're attached to carbon number one, in this case you call it is, you be called isobutyl. If I'm now attached to carbon number two, two goes back into elementary school again. I'm going to find my longest carbon chain. I'm going to find my carbon on my branch. How many carbons is directly attached to put a star beside this carbon out? How many carbons are directly attached to this carbon out? What name is given to when you, I guess like tertiary. But I guess with, but I mean the third grade type one, but it's tertiary as far as names. This is tertiary. Tertiary view. But again, tertiary is a lot of more, I mean tertiary is a lot of levels to try to spell out. Kevin's get their hands in a cramp. We need to find a shorter way to actually spell out tertiary. Give us another name. You can see you can see beautiful, but turret beautiful. So you can call it tertiary beautiful or make sure turret beautiful. Or because four letters is still a lot of letters to write. What beautiful? T. T beautiful. And our carbon atom substituents, the three carbon atom substituents, you're going to have three carbon atom substituents. You're going to have two names. N-propyl, isopropyl. Once you need to bring the isopropyl down to just one layer, would be ipro to make it even more lazier. Not beautiful. Four carbon atom substituents will have two names, four names. for on exam numero dos. I can ask you as far as name the four carbon atom substituents, which would be N-butyl, sec-butyl, tert-butyl, isobutyl, and sec-butyl. So look at the different names and stuff for it. Or I can have you draw the molecule on a larger um, carbon chain, for example, in a five-membered ring or six-membered ring. Give you carbon 
you to draw the four carbon atom substituents attached one to each of those four rings. You attach one of the carbon atoms, no matter what order you put into it. One of them we can put four in a straight line. The next one we can have it four in a straight line. This time I attach to the middle one. Next one do three and one. And this three and one, I'm going to attach to the end three and one. And what you get, end butyl, set butyl, end butyl, number two, set butyl. You have C, which is isobutyl, and we have D, which is tributyl. We're going to have you name a particular group as far as doing the IU pack name. We kind of got some fun stuff to do. Example, how would you name this model? Let's get it relaxed. Feel this, my feelings, my feelings, and it gets all wrong. She relaxed. First thing you do is do what? Find my longest carbon chain. What's my longest carbon chain? Straight line, which is 10. I try to become trying to trick that out. So we got 10. Circle my longest carbon chain. What name goes with team? Deck. What type of carbon bonds do I have? Singles. So I get A, a and E. Deck hang. Next, I'll do what? Box. 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 Any group that's not part of my longest carbon chain. Box. 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 It's a whole unit, not pieces. Box is a whole unit, and yeah, not pieces, in a box. How many cards make up this box? One thing. Which is methyl, ethyl, methyl. How many cards make up this box? Four. Oh, you are doing the next one. You already, you already jumped, jumped ahead to the next one. I didn't want that many carbon atoms first. You got ready to try to figure what type it is. I didn't say that. Yeah, that's the way you look. I guess obviously you're going to the next step. Four. I didn't ask how many carbon is four. four. So no can be butyl. Now what type butyl is this? Is this in butyl? So basically we got four. You go through the line of four. It's in butyl. Nah, not in butyl. Is it set butyl? I look my attachment system is not sec butyl. It is isobutyl. 
Yes. All right, so or turbulence. So what we'll do is like these seven numbers short, go through a list of four. In beauty gonna be the one that's drawn straight lines, not a straight line. Set beauty. I look at my car down and my if I look at my car down at the ring attached to. I look at my car the ring attached to. How many carbons in the little uh, four numbered ring before I add a ring is attached to? This is one, so it's not set. If I look for here, it's not turret. Only one can be is then would be ISO. So again, we try to do like a process. If I write the molecule stuff here, how do I know which one it is? I'll write a list down about what four it is. In beauty, got to be a straight line. If it's not a straight line, then I do my count between the groups and stuff on it. As long as I tell it's not in beauty, I will then I'll look at my card down right here. About I might direct the test of um, two. Here is one. One is not one by number. Then I look for here, is this if uh tertiary got to attached to three? I'm not attached to three. So my choice got to end up being is ISO. This will be ISO view. Because it's attached to no, the, the, if you get an end view, it'll be a straight chain. All of a straight line, not branching. You notice right here, my group here is not a straight line, it's a branch. Then I go to my numbers. So I got my end view. If I know it's not end view, it's not a straight line, I cross that off. Is it set view? For set view, I find a carbon that I'm attached to. And this carbon I'm directly attached to two carbons in, in the chain. No, so it's not set. Then I go to if it's turret. If I look at this carbon down again, it's attached to three carbons in the chain. No. So once I eliminate all this stuff out, the process elimination said it has to be ISO. But that would that require you to know that in beautiful could be a straight line. In view is all the carbon down will be the straight group. One, two, three, four, five. All it can be either in, but they got to be the straight line. One, two, three, four. So if I do want to go to the numbers, so I list my group of stuff there, and I go to my process of crossing all which one it is. As you get more comfortable by doing it, you can, it'll be much easier for us to do the process. But if you get stuff between which one it is, if you recognize as far as in view, and then go to the rest of the rest of process. The rest of the process count. How many carbons are directly attached to the uh, branch? And we do one as far as like um, look at a different little type of uh, range. Now we're going to look at the next group, which is propyl. There's two propyls. One propyl says it's going to be a straight chain, and that's N. If it's not a straight chain, it would be ISO. Is that probe a straight chain? Yeah. So therefore will be ISO. ISO probe. So now I just put the number of stuff after the order and then do a little number as far as that goes. So we got butyl, ethyl, methyl, and probe. So I'm using the B, not the I, when we are putting it after the order. Accidental will create little rules so far as dealing with that thing. N doesn't count. Sec and turret doesn't count. But ISO counts for the alphabetical order. Uh, but as far as it be, I just go with straight uh, uh, the alphabetical order. We're not trying to get not like so the group. What I'm trying not to do is not to get so bogged down a whole bunch of trivial details. Again, it's like what you want to do is just put the, put the alphabetical order and I just ignore the I as far as the alphabetical order stuff goes. But again, we're on exam. I'm not counting as far as like if you got alphabetical order. I'm looking for the number in the group. If it's a little bit out of alphabetical order, we're not taking points off a little bit out of alphabetical order. But even out of alphabetical order, this for here will still be my number. This is card number two, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. We call this five isobutyl four ethyl methyl two five dimethyl, I mean two eight 
Six isopropyl. Keep, uh, 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 I'm being honest stuff here. Make sure you keep, uh, keep me in the test as far as that. But like I said, we got this molecule here. We're going to try to do a little group of stuff on this one. Remember, for all the group, we got a group, four carbon atoms. Notice right here, this is a straight line. So we got one, two, three, four, straight line. As long as you recognize that the straight line one is being in butyl, we can then come to rest on by doing process of, process of elimination. If I were to look at this particular number right here, I got what's left? N-butyl, isobutyl, set-butyl, tert-butyl. I'm going to find my four carbon out of the unit. And I do my little count. Find this carbon out. How many carbons is carbon on your attached to, as far as on the four carbon out of the chain? This is one. Only one that's for one is in butyl, but you said it's not in butyl, so it can't be, uh, it's not in butyl, so basically it's not going to be set. We know it's not going to be set, but we're going to be turd. So only test of one. So I take off set and I take off turd. Only one it could be then would be ISO. If I go to the next group right here, I find my carbon atom of this four, of the four carbon atom unit. How many carbons this carbon atom you're this carbon atom you're going to test to? Two, that would be set butyl. If I go to the next one here, I'll find my carbon atom. How many carbons of my four carbon, four carbon atom unit am I attached to? Three. Not counting not count uh, the long chain. Three. three. That will make it turn. Mm -hmm. As so long as you get the butyl type one, I would list it, um, list, my four, list my four names, and then go to the process of elimination, tell you which one it actually would be. Have a um, little, little, little numbers. So that the um, the end bureau, I mean the, the propyl and the bureau. Next, we're going to talk about our functional groups. Have some fun doing that. Actually, the functional groups got to go back to chapter one. Name the organic functional groups. all the different groups and stuff, but most, most of the time you have to kind of like go over the fact that what is a functional group? So what is a functional group? What is a functional group? Jasmine or Jasmine? <laughs> Don't go for But I um, let me try to go ahead and speed up, speed up the process. A functional group is a is a area. Is an area of an organic molecule. Where chemical reacts occur. And then we have fun about trying to identify the different functional groups. 
Again, there's a whole bunch of different functional groups. And we're not going to try to go ahead and beat you to death for every single one of them. We try to do to kind of get some sort of a representation of the functional groups. Because again, it's like tons and tons of different organic functional groups. But we'll go through enough of them so we get tired of being sick and tired of talking about functional groups. I'm going to talk about derivatives of water. In our derivative, we're going to convert one of our hydrogen atoms into a carbon atom in water. So what I'm going to do is replace one of my hydrogen atoms in a molecule with a carbon. So I got a COH. So what is this referred to? But if you're at a club on a Friday night, bottoms up, what are you drinking? I don't know. I thought you were drinking like soda or something. <laughs> so the little COC, that's an alcohol. I also remember I changed one of the one of the hydrogen atoms to a carbon. Equal I could do what? Change the other, other hydrogen atom to a carbon. So we got a C. O, C. This will be an ether. And if you're out there trying to make it some uh, uh, man or something like that, one, you have to be careful with ether. Ether catches on fire faster than gasoline. So it's like way to blow up stuff for you to blow your whole house up. Then you do a little bit of ether, which is very flammable. In fact, you have a flame in another room and it back, back flashes and it blows you up in another room. That's how bad it is. I don't know if you can't push it in the chimney. Uh, not everybody blows himself up in a madhouse. Some, some do. Some. Now, notice for here what I end up doing, I replace, got my um, COH. Equally, I replace my oxygen atom with another element. I replace it with a nitrogen. And for our biology people, this refers to as a what? Start with an A. What is it? I don't say nothing. Biology. Did we just want to add a hot? Oh. But deal with a deal with a nitrogen atom. What is it? Amine. And amine. Equally, I can replace my nitrogen atom with a halide. So basically, I do replace the oxygen with group six, and I replace it with nitrogen with group five, and I also I can replace it with an element in group seven, which is a halide, which would be C X, where X equals fluorine, chlorine bromine, or iodine. This all is considered to be an alkyl halide. So I have a single body carbon atom attached to a chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine, all grouped together as referred to as alkyl halides. And just that we just getting started. Is that two words? Yeah, alkyl halide two words. Equally, remember how far we go from group um, oxygen atom, there's an element below oxygen, the same group. When we convert the, ad, the oxygen atom into a sulfur atom. Now, if there was an O, it would be an alcohol. But since it's an S, anytime you have a, a sulfur atom in the molecule, you have like a word to let you know it's sulfur. You're going to put the word thi, T-H-I. 
But this field would be alcohol. Instead of being an alcohol, you would call this a thiol. Isn't that fun? Okay, like we're just getting started. Just getting started. Now, also, you can take an alcohol, you can then oxidize it. And you're going to talk about derivative, um, carbonyl derivatives. 